This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and welcome to my new tutorial series called Learn Avid Media Composer 101. In this tutorial series, we're going to cover everything that you need to know, whether you're new to Media Composer or whether you're a seasoned veteran, we're going to cover everything right from how to get started creating that very first project in your shiny new subscription model version of Media Composer, all the way up to complex things like effects and even working with other applications in conjunction with Media Composer, such as Autodesk Smoke, DaVinci Resolve, and even Adobe's After Effects. Now, I know you're probably thinking, well, Kev, why would I want to take a look at your tutorial series? Because there's so many out there. Well, the reason that you're going to want to watch this one is that it's going to be constantly evolving. Obviously, now we're dealing with a subscription model of Media Composer. So, you know, right now we're at version 8.1 of Media Composer, but, you know, potentially down the line, we could be dealing with, you know, maybe 8.2, 8.3, and so on and so on, version 9, etc., etc. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be, you know, going with the flow, updating this tutorial series at least once a week, if not more. And as new versions and new features come out, we're going to be featuring them right away in this tutorial series, getting you up and running as fast as possible. Now, in this first lesson, believe it or not, we're not going to go into Media Composer at all. I want to cover some basics that I think are important that you, you know, sort of get into your head before you start editing. Now, the very first thing that I always tell people is make sure that if you're going to edit with Media Composer, that you have an external hard drive. In this case, I happen to have one right here. I simply have called it the Mac drive. You can probably hear it sort of grinding in the background there. And this drive is pretty much what I'm gonna to use to be housing not only my Avid projects, but also the Avid media that goes along with it. Okay, now I did mention that we are talking about the Media Composer subscription model. Now, how do I know that I'm actually running the Media Composer subscription model of Media Composer, which as, as of this recording right now, is at version 8.1? Well, it's actually very easy. Now, obviously you can see that I'm on a Mac, so things will vary slightly uh, if you happen to be using Windows, but I will be calling out shortcuts and things like that for both Mac and Windows as we go. So Windows users, don't worry, you can follow along as well. You're gonna notice up here at the top of my window, I actually have a little icon, and what this icon is, is it's actually the Avid Application Manager. Now for all my Windows friends, you're actually gonna find that at the bottom, uh, on your toolbar down at the bottom. And what this basically is, is it's gonna be sort of your one-stop shop for information most specifically on when new versions of Avid Media Composer are available. You'll see that right now it's telling me that there's a new version of Media Composer available. If I wanted to update, I could. It's also telling me that my application manager is up to date and right now I happen to be using New Blue Titler Pro number one. Now, what's also important to keep in mind, and I wanna mention this before I move on, is that now that you've decided to go with the monthly subscription option for Media Composer, you do get some great free perks with that subscription. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna command and tab into Firefox, and right now I'm on Avid's main webpage, and I've come to the subscription section of uh, when you're gonna purchase your Media Composer subscription, and you'll see that right in here, with your monthly subscription of Media Composer, you obviously get not only Media Composer, but you get the Symphony option. Now, what is Symphony? Symphony, the Symphony option not only gives you secondary color correction, a much more powerful color correction tool, but it also gives you universal mastering as well. Don't worry, we're gonna talk all about that in a later tutorial. But I also wanna mention that you do get New Blue Titler Pro 2, Boris Continuum Complete Light, Sorensen Squeeze Light, and a free 30-day trial of Isotope Insight. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that you're gonna to wanna to download these. You'll get an email that has links to all of these uh, plugins and software, so you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you download them. And what's great is, is that if I come right back up to the top here to the Application Manager, you're gonna see that two of these items in here I can actually download right from the Application Manager. I can download the New Blue Titler Pro right from here. And I can even download Sorens and Squeeze Lite. Now, the Boris Continuum Complete BCC Lite plugins, you'll actually have to download directly from Boris Effects. So that's something that's important to keep in mind. 
Now, moving on from the apps section of the application manager, which obviously covers some of the third party apps that you get, as well as the application manager and Media Composer itself. If we move to the feed section, you'll see that we can actually come through and we can get some very cool, not only news and information about Media Composer, but you can also get some great tutorials in here as well, specifically in this case on Boris Consume Complete Light with a tutorial done by yours truly. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that in just a second. I'm just gonna hide Firefox again here. You'll see that if I move on, I can get licensing information as well. Now this is actually very important if you ever need to, uh, you know, let's say call Avid because you're having a technical issue with something, this is where you can come in and get all of the information about your Media Composer subscription, including license details, system IDs, and things like that. And last but certainly not least, in the support tab, you'll see that with your subscription, with the standard support, you get one phone call per month and unlimited uh, web support with 24 hour response time. Okay, now that is the application manager. Let's just talk about a few more things here before we wrap up this introductory tutorial. And then in the next lesson, we're going to get in and we're actually going to launch Media Composer and start talking about creating projects. Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to command and tab back into Firefox. Now, this is something that's very important that I want everybody to keep in mind, is that anytime a new version of Media Composer comes out, we're just going to use version 8.1 because that happens to be the most current version of Media Composer right now. So version 8.1 comes out. So how do we know that there's going to be an update? Well, you remember we talked briefly in here about if I come into the application manager, you'll see right here that I have an update or I'm being told that there's an update for Media Composer. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that right now, the way that things work is that for all of my Windows friends out there, these updates are patch updates, basically meaning you don't need to download the full version of Media Composer to update it to whatever the current version happens to be. Maybe it's 8.10002 you know, or you know things like that. Because remember, patch updates are coming out all the time, not necessarily just for version eight. There's actually patch updates coming out for previous versions of Media Composer as well. Now, what's also important to keep in mind is that for all my Mac friends out there is that when you are going to update, you actually have to download the entire full two gigabyte full version of Media Composer and uninstall it and then reinstall the new version for you to do your update. That's just something that I want you to keep in the back of your head. Windows friends, you can download just a patch. It might be, you know, 100 megabytes, 200 megabytes, install that. Mac friends, unfortunately, you got to download the full version of the software, two, two and a half gigs of it. So that might take you a little while depending on your bandwidth. Okay, now what I was going to do here, let me just close this back up here. So I'm going to command tab into Firefox because I was talking about what happens when a new version comes out, for example, 8.1. Well, what I always do, very first thing I do, anytime a new versions come out now, especially with the subscription model, because things are being added now in all the point updates, is I head on over to avid.com slash US slash downloads. I log into the download notification center and you'll see that I can come right down here to Media Composer software. And in here, what I'm actually gonna do is just log in again, just cause it was a, I was leaving it on that screen for a little while there. I can come in here and here's version 8.1. And what's most important in here, besides obviously the version right here, you'll see there's the Mac Media Composer 8.1, Windows 8.1. Now that's the full version. If I wanted the patch version, you'll see that I can actually find it right up here. There's the patch installer. You'll see that if I click on it, there are all the patch updates. You'll see no patch updates right now available for uh, version eight because you'd find that up here inside of the application manager. But if I come back here, what I was saying was that inside of the Media Composer software download, what I always like to do is I like to come in here and I like to come to the README What's New editing guide. I'm just gonna hide Firefox here. And here it is for version 8.1, all of the new features that are available to you with this new version 8.1. So for me, I like to get in here right away, see what's new, you know, check out all the great new features, just so I can keep myself sort of on top of what's happening. But then again, you have this tutorial series to do that for you if you don't feel like doing that. Okay, so let me just close this up here. I'm just gonna command tab back into Firefox here. Now next, I did talk about BCC Lite, which gets you four plugins from Boris Continuum Complete to use inside of any one of your Media Composer projects. Now, for a limited time, if you head on over to the Boris Effects website, you can actually come in and you can tweet about the new Boris Continuum Complete units that are available for Avid Media Composer, and you will get the Textures unit 
absolutely free to work in any project that you happen to be working on. Nothing wrong with free, and the Boris Continuum Complete plugin set is a fantastic plugin set, so why wouldn't you head on over if it's free and just do a simple tweet about it? Okay, moving on. I have a new home, and my new home is over at the Pro Video Coalition. So if you head on over to ProVideoCoalition.com, you head to the Experts section, you come on right on over here to the post corner, Kevin P. McAuliffe, you can find any tutorial that I'm going to be posting for my Media Composer 101 tutorial series or any other articles I happen to be writing right here in sort of my little corner of the web. Now, how do you keep on top of the tutorials that I'm posting? Well, obviously you can check out Pro Video Coalition or what you can also do is you can follow me on Twitter at KP McAuliffe or why don't you head on over and you can check me out on Google Plus at plus.google.com slash plus Kevin P. McAuliffe slash posts or if you want to subscribe to this channel to again stay on top of all the tutorials that I happen to be posting you can head on over and check me out at youtube.com slash user slash media composer 101 okay so that pretty much wraps up my first lesson like I said we're not really getting into media composer in this first lesson because I wanted to just sort of cover some bases give you just sort of some general information to get you started to get ready to get in and create that first project. Now in our next lesson we're going to get in, we're going to talk about project creation and how it's a little bit different than what you might be accustomed to or think how it might work. But once you see how Media Composer is set up, you're really going to appreciate why it wants you to work in a very specific way. Now before I wrap up this lesson, I want to thank our sponsor Video Guys, and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase including G Technology Storage, software plugins, and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button and don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.